Welcome back to another episode of the Real Estate Playbook. This week's guest is Karen McCormick. So let's get right into it, Karen. Why real estate? What made you decide to become a realtor? Oh, let me see. So I graduated college and graduated with an accounting degree. So I did accounting. Uh, I was a CPA for six years after college and oh, wow. it was it was awful. I just, <laughs> it was so boring. I was chained to a desk, you know, eight to five ish or after five um, all day. And I people had warned me mm-hmm. about it. They're like, you're not a CPA. You're not a CPA. But I was always good at math. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, fi- I think I did that for six years. Okay. And then I got the... Um, the not the urge but the what's the kick in the pants like mm-hmm. the, I was like okay I'm gonna do this I'm gonna you know be in charge of what I make mm-hmm. because, you know I did well at accounting but you just make that normal increase every year and it didn't hourly really matter or salary how much you put in or right out. so real estate was always interesting to me because it's really up to you on what you can do absolutely You're in charge of you know what you do or what you don't do mm-hmm. so I finally made the jump and uh, in 2003 and I'm still here. Uh-huh. 20 years I later. I can't believe it. I'm yeah. old. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think honestly it's too, it's, there's not that many realtors with longevity. You know, a lot are in and out of the business. So sure. it's kind of rare to hear somebody nowadays with a 10 year in real estate. Usually it's, you know, sub 10. They, they're kind of out. Most people don't even make it two years. So right. for you to kind of have that longevity, you've seen a lot of cycles in real estate. You were in before even the pre-boom where things were starting to really get ramped up. Right. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that journey? So you're in accounting, you kind of get licensed in 03. What does that look like for you when you're getting in back then? How was the market? How did you start kind of building your business? And then, you know, how quickly did you get into production and really start making the money you were hoping to make? So I was actually, I was not in Florida. I was okay. in Memphis, Tennessee. Okay. And, um, I was there for six years and I immediately crushed it. I got rookie of the year. I, awesome. Um, and then I was, you know, top top five probably at the company for several years and then i uh, made the move down to florida okay so that's about what 2009 10? 2009 I okay moved down to florida and um so in memphis i was on my own i was an individual agent did buying and selling whatever i wanted to do but then when i moved down here i i did try to do it on my own and i just i just struggled but you're also in a very difficult time Sure, 2009. 2009. Yeah, that's not the best right. time to really right. start real estate we, in a new market. Yeah, we didn't have the the weirdness that was in Florida and Memphis. It yeah. was, you know, it's a lower price market and it didn't really have the, the craziness that happened here. So um, I ended up working at a company and just couldn't figure it out on my own. I don't know, just maybe I wasn't motivated. So my team leader at the time was like, hey, you need to join this team. They're mm-hmm. wanting to build, they're wanting to grow. And um, I interviewed with that team and it's... I was with them for several years, 13, probably yeah. at least 13 years. Yeah, very successful track record you had right. kind of running with that organization. Right. So then when you're kind of going in in 09, you got on with the team, what are some, so one of it sounds like accountability, right? You, like what I heard is you don't know if you're motivated enough to really do it on your own. What were the, some of the advantages of that you've had the unique perspective of being an independent agent, also on a team back to independent agents? What are kind of some of the advantages you see the both sides? To both sides yeah um, well the reason i like the team best and that's probably the why the reason i joined it back mm-hmm. when i did was just the camaraderie and the um sometimes you feel like you're out on an island when you're by yourself and you just have to align yourself with people to help you to encourage you to move you along so i had that natural being on a team you naturally have that. so more of a group setting than yeah. you know being out on your own and even when i was the individual agent in memphis i i still uh, piled up with a few agents and we we were like our own little team we did things together you know yeah spies. so i i do need that i have major fomo and um, <laughs> probably need to come to loots a little more often than yeah. i do but uh, i do need that that team. camaraderie yes and that's something that here is um everybody has each other's backs and yeah i, I could see the support there so it's- yeah we try to do everything as a culture i know a lot of times in real estate you're kind of going to be off on your own island doing a lot on your own but it's Nice, like even though agents aren't mandated, they'll come to the office, work when they can to kind of build that culture. Then we we'll obviously get together outside of work, you know, right. for that camaraderie. And obviously, you know, the benefits of the team I'm thinking are, you know, 2009, they're holding you accountable. So you're kind of, I don't have a job, but now I have to work uh, mentality. Plus, I'm assuming they're providing you opportunities. You're to a new market. You being a new agent, especially independent, right. it's tough to come by. So right. how was that experience? Was it that you found it was easier for you, even though you were obviously working at a split? 
once you had leads and business coming in, was it more comfort level or was it just that accountability aspect? So I found it, well, it was tough on my own when I first moved here. And right. I was like, I know how to, I know how to sell real estate, mm-hmm. but I don't have leads. I don't know people here yet. And I, I just need, you don't have anybody to sell to. Right. Exactly. Or I didn't want to, to door knock and all yeah. that stuff. I don't blame so, um, yeah. Having the, that support, I was just like, just give me leads and I can, I can close them. Awesome. And then as far as your account, um, accounting background, so we always kind of look at you being a successful agent, getting into production rather quick. I mean, even rookie of the year, then top five after that in Memphis. What were some of the skills that you brought kind of from that accounting field besides the basic math um, that helped you accelerate um, as an agent getting to production quicker rather than, you know, the other agents who are on board with you and then other agents at the brokerage after your first year? Okay, the accounting. I think maybe, well, definitely the math skills that, mm-hmm. that helped me. The net sheets and yeah, uh, offers. Yeah, that comes, you know, second nature to me on that. Um, counting, I just don't. <laughs> I got to think you have a work schedule, the discipline, right. right? Like a lot of times agents who, let's say if you're coming straight out of high school or okay. maybe hospitality, a lot of times they don't have that work regiment, the work ethic. So you was probably already instilled. Anywhere you came in, you like you knew how to put in the hours, right. work a calendar, things of that nature. Definitely during tax season, I you know yeah. you put in the hours. Working you nonstop. Take, so. Yeah. I think I learned to work smarter, not harder. Mm-hmm. As being a, you know making that switch from CPA to an agent. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then obviously, like you said, you want to be kind of in control of your own destiny. Um, you know, not have really a ceiling on your income. You know what you put in, you got out. But right. obviously, it's up to you. So then what is something that, you know, we always like to ask this, you're getting into real estate, you probably have this grandiose vision of what it's going to be like and all these great things uh, in Memphis going from accounting to real estate. What was one thing that you did not expect when you were getting into real estate? Like when you got licensed, you're starting, like some, everybody talks about what they did expect, you know, but like what's something you didn't expect that maybe you took for granted? Well, one thing I can remember <laughs> vividly is that I forgot to set money aside for taxes. Yeah. So uh, at the end of the year, I did very well my first year in real estate. I uh, ended up selling some of my investments to pay for my taxes. taxes. So that's something I learned um, very, quickly, very quickly in the business. At least you learned it your first year, and right? I should have known that. Like, I used to be a CPA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but going from W-2 to 1099, right. probably just not, know. you know, kind of you're in a new field and everything's setting aside. I think that's very important too. And then to kind of add on to that, a lot of agents, you know, they kind of wait till it's too long. I think they wait for that banner year, but we bring them in when they come on and so we're always like, hey, incorporate your license now. Don't wait for that year to come because right. then some, sometimes it's too late. Right. So I can agree more with you on that. As far as, you know, you're seeing different cycles in the marketplace, um, you know, working through the boom, you know, and Memphis, then kind of coming down here, work through the crash, and then kind of on the way back up through COVID, all that good stuff, you know, not COVID being good, but a great market here with a lot of money that was kind of flowing through here in the real estate sector. What's something like in the marketplace that you're seeing right now that might be new to you from that you haven't seen in these previous cycles? Well, I will tell you, I've noticed. So in my previous 13 years, I was mainly a manager. So I wasn't out on the streets, pounding the streets, but I did see what everybody did at the company. Mm -hmm. But one thing I've really been noticing in this or that's coming, not necessarily this market, but ongoing is the social media aspect of, Mm -hmm. of real estate. I'm like, oh my God. I have to learn how to make reels and, and do all this other stuff besides just the plain selling of real estate. So mm-hmm. I feel like that's changed dramatically in the last year or so. Yeah, I think it continues to change, right? And right. evolve. As soon as you learn something, it's like you got to go on and learn the next thing. Right, exactly. So how's, how has that transition been, you know, with your learning it, putting it into practice and in place? Or were you nervous and kind of tense in the beginning? Or is it something that came second nature and once you learned it, you were just off and running? I like doing it, but it's very time consuming. Mm-hmm. So I think that, and there's a big learning curve on it. So my, my 12 year old nephew probably can do, you know, <laughs> use CapCut a lot better than I can, but it, with the help of a lot of people, you know, with Melvin, yeah. it, he's been wonderful in just learning social media and, and what to do. And it's, it's time consuming, but I think Absolutely. the learning curve will kick in. Absolutely. And are you starting to see you built, making up traction, build an audience, or are you starting to get more engagement on the reels and posts that you're making? Yeah, a little bit. I've uh, really just started doing it. Okay. And it's fun. Yeah, awesome. It's kind of it's something different because a lot of people getting into real estate probably aren't aware, especially now, you know, you're, you're, you are your brand and getting out there and promoting yourself and the best way to do that through is social media and, and then all the videos. 
So in, in addition to that with the marketplace, you're doing social media. What are some other, what might be some other things you're doing to kind of help dominate in this market compared to markets of the past or what other agents that you're seeing your competition do that they're really not putting in the time, but maybe you're kind of focusing on it because you see an opportunity. And it can't be a sector or anything else outside, you know, from social media. Like, do you see, like, you know, bank foreclosures, getting bank contracts, uh, you know, at a certain time would help, you know, somebody build a business, establish, like, um, a steady flow of income. If you got in with attorneys or short sales, if you got in with builders, other agents kind of go after strategic business partners. Is there any sector or anything that you're trying to get into where you see an opportunity in real estate that maybe a lot of agents don't know about or taking advantage of? You know, I haven't found that yet, but that's, <laughs> thanks for the idea. Uh, I've really been just focusing on, focusing on the quality of the clients mm -hmm. and really just focusing on helping get what they want um, more as not as a multitude of clients, you know, quality mm -hmm. over quantity. Um, I haven't found my niche yet, but I, I do want to work with people that I like to work with. Yeah. I think that definitely helps, you know, working with right. referral like-minded people then tend to, if you ever not good, you know, have a good relationship with them, are able to build rapport, then you're going to have that from all the other clients that they refer you and usually like-minded. Right. So also though, too, you, you kind of know some people with like third parties who kind of can possibly be strategic business referrals. And I know you've networked with a lot of these reps and agents that you've known over the years, home like being one of them. Have you tried to start some of this maybe business development and kind of get out there a little bit and bring those relationships as another pillar of business for you as well in getting leads? The home, the, the home light is a great program that yeah. I've been uh, working on. I very um, communicate with the home light rep here a lot and um, been working on some stuff with home light and getting that program out there because it's, it's benefit to this market. A hundred percent. And they definitely have some unique products that I think will help your clientele. Right. Not only help you close more business, but be beneficial to them as well, especially like one of them that I just recently learned about where it's, the the bridge loan to help get the uh, the new house without taking right. that older house into the debt ratio so it helps them qualify right pulling that equity out of the house that you are selling so you mm -hmm. can buy buy first yeah absolutely so and take your time it's exactly in this market waiting for the house to hit the market is a challenge. <laughs> yeah 100 percent. and what advice so you've kind of you know you've been in management for several years been in sales prior to getting into management now back in sales if you see an agent out there who's contemplating real estate um, maybe they're not having the type of success they had, or they had success maybe during COVID. Now it's a different market condition and they're not having the same level of success they were having in the past. What advice would you give to them? So this is something I probably need to tell myself mm -hmm. is just really get back to the basics. Yeah. The you fundamentals. Know, fundamentals, what you put into it, you will, um, you'll benefit from, you know, do the training, do the work mm -hmm. and, the, and it'll come. So yeah. Just. And then I think as realtors, real estate agents, we're always kind of chasing that shiny object. Sure. You know, what's the next thing? Or somebody's looking for an easier way out and they're thinking that tech might replace work ethic, but really tech's just enhancing the work ethic, but you gotta right. still put in the work. And I think that comes back to the fundamentals. And you, you can't do it in one day. So you know, yeah. real estate's like, hey, I can't do something right now and make something happen. Yeah. You, you have to put in the time, put in the effort and it will come. Absolutely. And from you being kind of on the field, you know, working with buyers and sellers, what kind of feedback are you getting in today's marketplace? You know, for the audience out there, what are you, if somebody might be thinking about buying or selling, what's kind of some of the feedback you're getting? Is now a good time to buy from the buyers, the sellers? Are they able to get the list prices that they're kind of rolling out there? And um, From what I've seen, you know, the sellers are still able to get what they want. Uh, it all is back to the buyers being able to um, find what they're looking for. And I know the interest rates are slowing some of my people down, but mm -hmm. again, if just they drop those interest rates, I'm just nervous about the competitiveness coming back because I feel like right now you, you can get something if you're buying. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And I think if they do drop the rates, you're going to have a, depending on what they drop to, you have a lot of right. the marketplace, which isn't listening. So we have a shortage in inventory, which keeps prices accelerating even for the high rates, but rates coming down, you have a lot of people who do want to move up, but the gap in the rate they have now to where interest rates are right now, they're kind of staying put. But I think if rates come back down, you will have a frenzy where right. I think you might possibly see, depending on how long it goes, a market busier than we did during COVID. Right. So always something new, right? You never see the same. At least I've been no, in it since nine. It's never the same thing. Never the same cycle. Always something new. Learning curve. And care for anybody out in the marketplace, uh, Tampa, greater Tampa Bay area who's looking to buy and sell. We'll share this on the social media platforms as well. Why don't you share with the audience the best number they can reach you on and the best email address to reach you on as well. Okay. My cell phone number is 
391-4422. And my email is Karen, K-A-R-E-N, at 54realty.com. Perfect. Well, Karen, once again, we greatly appreciate you for being a guest on this week's podcast. And we thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Real Estate Playbook. Mm-hmm.